Sunday school lesson of 2021. You know, it seems like it's, I haven't seen you since last year. Uh, That's true. <laughs> I, I think. Well, time flies. That's correct. <laughs> uh, so. I forwarded this cartoon to uh, to my daughters and son in law this week. I don't, does anybody read Ziggy? Yeah. Did you? Okay, you probably saw it if you, if you looked at it this week. Anyway, there was this uh, cartoon with Ziggy, and mm -hmm. Ziggy's walking out, and he's got these two, two bowls food for one's for a cat and one's for a dog and he said the, you know why the cats and dogs don't rule the world because they don't know how to run can openers they don't have, know how to run water. can openers mm -hmm. don't open the oh, food. you can open the can <laughs> you can open <laughs> I missed that one <laughs> so that's our that's our joke for the day okay that was cute <laughs> So anyway, we're starting on page 51. We're going to be in Lesson 5, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. The attitude of Christ. Now, don't we all need that. Don't we? Mm -hmm. This week, I have seen the worst things on Facebook. And I have to admit, sometimes my comments are very Caustic? Could be. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> I don't have a face plant account, so I don't see what they have there. So. Good. I'm, you would not like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, unfortunately, I, I look at Twitter, so because um, I'm looking for bicycling news and I scan by these other place, places. And sometimes it's it's uh, not very not very pleasant either. Yeah. So uh, let's look here. I want I wanted to read. Today's devotion from the disciplines. Okay. Today is, uh, I don't know if the right word is celebrate or remember. I guess remember is probably the better, the better uh, term. Here, let me get this open and I'll read it here. I have the old little computer here it behaves itself. The baptism of Christ. Or baptism of the Lord, it says. And we're to read Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. I'd, if you want to look that up, that's fine. It's, it's where Jesus comes out, uh, or comes down to John the Baptist and is baptized. Mm -hmm. and, and as he comes up out of the water, what happens? Well, the Lord says, God says, uh, this is good and this is my son. Mm -hmm. I recognize my son. So, with that in mind, here's, here's the uh, devotion for today. It says, uh, questions about baptism should abound this week. Why must Jesus be baptized if he is without sin? What is the larger message presented in his baptismal event? What does the baptism of Jesus mean for us as individuals and for the collective body of Christ? Depending upon the tradition and method, baptism has variations in significance and meaning. In its simplest form, baptism as rebirth into something new connotes, 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 whatever you want to say, it, turning away from something old. This is not in the binary sense of new old or good bad, but rather how is an order, how is order created out of disorder? How does God assert God's power and presence to tame the form, to tame formlessness? Now this is where where maybe some of us haven't, haven't seen this connection, but uh, from Genesis 1 to Mark 1, we've arrived full circle. We return to the early waters over which God's Rosh, which is spirit, hovers, and in one sweep, something new is created. In Genesis, it is the day and night, and Mark is the Christology of Jesus as Messiah. 
in Jesus' baptism, Christ does not turn met, metanio away from sin and repentance to shuva. Rather, he turns toward ministry. His baptism is the cue to order the next three years of his life. The teaching and healing that will change everything on his way to death. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. That, that uh, sounds similar very much to the words in Genesis after creation. Mm -hmm. um, they're each day. It is a foreshadowing of the Good Friday and Easter Sunday fulfillment to come. The image of God's voice hovering over the Genesis creation waters and Mark's baptismal waters resides with me and, and in me. On the moonlit beach walk in my infinite human brain, I see a sliver of epiphany light and encounter what, may, what it may have felt like to be there to witness such majesty and mystery out of the ordinary. That's, that's to uh, as we go along today this is the closest Sunday to when after Jesus' birth it was eight days later that he went to the temple and it's been a little more than eight days but this is the closest Sunday to it that's why I would choose this Sunday so, anyway I thought that was some, had some bearing Particularly connecting the part that that's, that sometimes I forget until I read that I didn't if I even knew it I didn't remember it's the connection between the water in Genesis and the baptismal water in Jesus' uh, baptism and, and as we think about baptism one of some of the things that it means it marks us as God's person. For Jesus, it, it, it marked the beginning of his ministry. Mm -hmm. He moved from being what we suspect was a carpenter mm -hmm. to being the Messiah. Well, okay, a little off, a little uh, different from Philippians, but we're we're looking at the lesson five. So why don't we begin with a word of prayer, and then uh, then we'll. We'll delve into page 51 here in, in uh, Philippians. Father, thank you for this time as we come together this, this Sunday, the first class meeting in uh, the year 2021. Be with us. Be with those that aren't with us today. Watch over them. If they be sick, help them to heal. And open our minds and our hearts and our eyes as we look at Philippians and show us how this applies to our lives and how we can apply it to uh, our mission statement, which is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Amen. All right, so we got, uh, does anybody remember Philippians? You know, it's been a while since we've uh, talked about the book Philippians. Mm -hmm. It's in the Bible. It is. You know, I, I've heard that. <laughs> The Philippians. The Philippians. Let's, uh, let's go down here and see. Yeah. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll cruise around on this a little bit. I don't know that we're going to get too far. In this. Let me uh, donate something here. I think I even actually have change for change. Oh, you know, for when, you go, when you go to the bank and the ATM only spits out $20 bills. Yeah, when he spits out twenty dollar bills, and you never, and you don't go to the store and pay yes. cash for anything very often, you don't get any change. You don't have change. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I made a particular point, I guess, I went someplace to get some change. <clears throat> but I don't go to the ATM very often these days because I don't spend anything. <laughs> and if you don't go anywhere, you don't spend anything. You don't spend. Yeah, you don't spend any money if you don't go, go anywhere. Why do I go through so much? I don't know. Where are you spending it? I have no idea. It well, just goes. You need a budget hand, girl. Yeah. Well, I do. I, but it still goes. It still goes. You have to, you have to write it down. Things are so Capture expensive. it somehow or another. Well, put your checkbook. There's, there's a program called Every Dollar. Mm -hmm. From Dave Ramsey. You can get this free. If you, if you download it and put it in there, you can do your budget. 
put it in, put it on that uh, phone. My budget's kind of here. Okay, well, you just have to go back and watch where it is. But uh, yeah, it is yeah, easy to, it's right here. for money to just go right through your fingers if you don't, yes. you don't keep track of it. So oh it's goodness. kind of like, you know, when, you, when you're one of the tenants of Weight Watchers and other things, mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're eating, how are you going to manage it? Uh, so one of the first things they get, get serious on is keep track of what you're eating. And then you can say, well, you know, those three boxes of cookies that you eat every night before you go to bed, that might be the problem. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, my gosh, last night, Delaney, she wanted to bake. So she made chocolate chip cookies. Oh. Well, okay, so I had one. It was so good, I had a second one. <laughs> Look at you. You better stop. <laughs> I had three of them. Oh, I was like, oh my gosh. I had three of those chocolate chip cookies. Oh, goodness. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't sleep. Oh, yeah. Eight o'clock at night having chocolate chip cookies oh, with yeah. chocolate. That, was, that yeah. child's measuring spoon, that uh, teaspoon, you put mm -hmm. it in the dabs on the mm -hmm. those, those were the biggest teaspoons for the dough I've ever seen. Those cookies that do around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Monster. Kind of like they sound Amos, good. Amos. Famous Amos. Oh, yeah. Famous, Famous Amos. Amos. Uh -huh. Those were large. Yep. And then yeah. after that, she had hot chocolate and popcorn, too. Oh, boy. Well, the popcorn isn't so bad unless you load it up oh, with butter. But, uh, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, but that's why you measure out. I, I, I had some, some uh, mm -hmm. things like that last night. For some reason or another, I've been on this kick. I, I went down the cracker aisle at the grocery store and oh. box, uh -huh. bought a box of vanilla wafers. Mm -hmm. So those are good, but I only yeah. put out like six or eight and then put the box back. Mm -hmm. You don't eat from the box. Count out how many you're going to put the box oh, you back. You don't? No. Oh, but that must be the problem, baby. It was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you count out five, six, seven, eight, five, and then you put the box away. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I, had, I had a salad for lunch. Salad for lunch while they had <coughs> the spaghetti and sauce. And oh, that would be. Well, then, this, the lowest were like this. Then I was also to go, well, the, the vanilla, the uh, uh, wafers are fairly new. But I, last month I started, I made a mistake and went down the, the uh, making aisle at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the uh, icing and I found this cream cheese icing. Oh, Italian cream cheese icing. Yep. And over on the cook cracker by aisle again, oh. I had a box of graham crackers, so I thought, okay. You can put the icing on the graham crackers. That's, that's that what, what I you did. did. Yeah, I pulled out three crackers, put the rest in the box, back in the pantry, and put icing on the crackers. Those are good. Mm -hmm. And when I run out of icing, I'm not buying any more. I did. When I buy a good icing like that, I, I dedicate a spoon just to that can. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he just eats it right out of the can. It's my Forget can. a cookie oh, yeah. or a graham yeah. cracker, just eat it right out of the Yeah, it is. Oh, well, I don't have funny. that problem, but uh, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, back to our lesson okay. here. Okay. We're on, okay. we're on we the attitude, pick trail. attitude of Christ. We always. The attitude of Christ. He doesn't eat. Okay. I, don't, I don't remember reading in the Bible of him eating uh, Italian cream cheese mm -hmm. icing and graham cracker. Because he didn't have it. But if and he I've been tempted it, to try it on vanilla wafers, too. I oh, very good. Very good. I think that would be, and yeah. you can just dip the cookie into the uh, ice. I haven't <laughs> thought of that. Lois, you're uh, corrupting me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I had not thought about that. Okay. Well, it says here at the top, Jesus was alive in Palestine only 30 years before Paul wrote to the Philippian church. Yet Paul stated in chapter 2, verse 6 through 11, not as an amazing teaching of which he wanted to convince his readers, but as a body of agreed fact that should lead the Philippians to certain behavior. So Paul, only 30 years removed from when Christ was in Palestine, it was, it's uh, still still fresh. Still has a So it says here, read chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. So did everybody do that? Did you read chapter 2, verses 5 through 11? If not, I'm going to have to take your gold star away from you. No, that's how teachers work. Lois, isn't that it? You take gold stars away or demerits? Oh, oh no. No? No, that's for serious stuff. Oh, okay, serious stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So anyway, let's read chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. It's not very long. This is an important, important.
important part here. It says, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Now, as I read this first, you know, six through, actually five through eight, what comes to mind? To me, it was Jesus' confrontation with Satan in the, in the wilderness of desert. The, the Satan wanted him to exploit his position. And Jesus said no. I'm not here for that. So, okay. Continuing on, verse 9 says, Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so at that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, that doesn't necessarily say here in the lesson, but when I read this chapter, not chapter 6, but verse 9 and verse 10, non-believers are going to bend their knee not a question of if, it's when they choose to do that. So, they may not like to hear that. And it also says in verse 11, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. But there's going to be some that say no. Okay, our question number one says, what is the connection between chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, and chapter 1? 27 through chapter 2 verse 4. So what did, what did you make the connection there? How did you connect those two? Other than the fact that they're written on the same page. Well, maybe not on the same page. It depends on where your Bible is. Mine are on different pages. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I'm not going to... Well, they're in the same book. That's true. Same book. Okay. So, what other? There's got to be something more than just that part. It says, look at several translations that Well, here, anybody have any ideas? If you start at verses 5 through 11, and look at those. So what, what's verses 5 through 11? What's it focused on? Uh, be the mind of Christ. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's focused on Christ. Yeah. Jesus. Humility. Yeah. So now if you could jump up here to verse 27, what do we see? What's the what's verses twenty-seven through four about? Is that a high level? About hanging fast in your faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> worthy starts off verse twenty-seven. Worthy of the gospel of Christ. So, if you look down here in, in verses five through eleven, we see. The worth, I guess we might say, or the value of Christ, and that He emptied Himself out as what? Not a servant, or not a not a, a ruler, a slave slash servant. So, what I put down here, I said, Paul instructs believers how to imitate Christ. That would be in twenty-seven through four, and then verse five through eleven, Paul writes how Jesus lived lived on earth and why we should worship him. So here's, if we imitate him in 27 through verse 4, this is how some of the results that we should have. We should not regard equality with God, not that we have that opportunity, but if we think along that line, we should Right, and then in, in chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, uh, mm -hmm. where it talks about let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. Right. But in lowliness of mind, so there's being humble, let each of himself esteem others better than himself. Uh -huh. So, and, we, and in verse 2, to be like minded, having the same love as Christ. Mm -hmm. So, if those verses are telling us how that we should we imitate, imitate him. And then verses 5 through 11 gives us some, or gives us some background or how Jesus acted. He was on earth while he was with us. We see here being found in human form, he humbled himself. So if he humbled himself, then we should, you know, we're going to imitate him. Then there's, like we've been talking about before from previous lessons, is 
humility, humble. Amen. Well, over here on the right hand side it says for further study. How is it possible to have your attitude or mind change? It says in verse 2, or in chapter 2, verse 5. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So how do we change your mind? How is it possible to change your attitude or mind? And he gives us some, some uh, scripture to look at. Well, um, you have to be committed to do it. You, you, you don't mean you don't necessarily, and this is going to sound strange, but to have your mind change, it's just not head knowledge, but it's heart knowledge. Yeah. You got to be dedicated to it. Yeah, it's like, uh, I think I mentioned this before, uh, one of the first things that uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or other groups, 12-step groups they're called, one of the first things that you have to do is admit that you have a problem. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to change your mind, the first thing you got to do is you got to admit that it needs to be changed. Or I want to change. Same thing goes, you know, we'll pick on those people who eat chocolate chip cookies. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to eat chocolate chip cookies. You gotta <laughs> or graham crackers with mm-hmm. cream cheese icing on it. you got to say, you know, I might go home and then throw that can of icing away. Uh, don't do that. Oh, okay. So, but I, <laughs> no, I guess I won't do it. The can's almost empty. I, it won't last. I've got more graham crackers than i got icing. In Romans 12, too, it says uh, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's right. So you got to renew your mind. Not be conformed to the world, but renew your mind. Yep. Transform. So how do you do? Uh, study. Study. Study okay. the word. How else? I think we have to be in prayer. prayer. Because it, that's something we just can't do. Well, I'm going to change my mind. No. It takes a little bit more than that. In prayer. You have to read the word and learn it. I put down overall of these verses, and then I have some, like Betty was saying there. I said, by conviction of the Holy Spirit, the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit convicts us that we need to change. Mm-hmm. And then we need to follow through with that mm-hmm. and take those steps. Now, once we make or accept that conviction and may take the steps forward, then like Betty was saying in Romans 12, 2, renewing of your mind uh, is, is one step. Then in Romans 8, 3 through 3 through 13, it's, overall it says, living as the Spirit directs us. So, if we live as the Spirit directs us, then that will change our mind because we will move away from flesh, as Paul writes about, where we have a battle between flesh and the spirit. If we allow the spirit to, to direct us, we no longer are controlled by the flesh to some extent. We're still human though, so we still still have problems with the flesh. And then verses 26 through 30, the spirit helps us. We're not in this alone uh, because we can't do it by ourselves. So the spirit helps us. Then jumping over to Psalms 86, 11, uh, the teaching of the Lord. Then uh, Psalm 119, verse 11 is treasure God's word in our heart. So part of the changing of our mind is going to be from reading God's reading God's word and then following His His His. Verses 33 through 40 in Psalm 119 is obeying God's word. So if we change, if 
if we obey God's word, it's going to change our mind or our attitude. Because without God's uh, laws or, uh, I wish I could remember that word, it's just not happening. Uh, maybe if I went to Psalm 119 and looked it up. Uh, so, those, those are the things that I saw. Uh, did anybody come up with more different? Was I off in left field? No, you were. Mm-hmm. No. no. This week I was listening to a podcast and they were asking, you know, where did this phrase come from left field? You know? And they, they were discussing this. And the reason it's, they used it without a left field is because in baseball, when a runner runs it, passes uh, third base, he no longer can see left field. So when the throw comes in to the home plate to put him out, he has, he has no idea where it's at. So it comes out of left field. I'm just saying. Oh, that makes sense. I mean, I'm like the, the precepts or the statutes. Precepts, that's it. Precepts, precepts, that's the word. You got it. Precepts. Thank you. That's, that's the uh, or those are God's precepts or law mm-hmm. or his will. We can interchange that frequently in some settings. So, well, down here at the bottom of page 51, it, it gives us some uh, insight on the attitude. Mind, in the King James and the Revised Standard Version, uh, the Greek word bronet, bronite, and related words, phrenium, mean, uh, mean mind, feeling, and a mental state or habit, as opposed to just thinking. This group of words occurs often in Philippians. And they list some verses. It signifies concern or focus of attention as well as habit of mind. Now, you've probably heard, you know, that it takes 21 days to break a habit. You've got to go 21 days to get reprogrammed. Or to establish a habit, too. It works both ways. To either start a habit or break a habit. So to go along with that, okay, we're on day 10 of January 2021. A lot of people, when the New Year starts, they put out resolutions and say, you know, for this year I'm going to do such and such, whatever that is. And uh, most people, within a couple of days, they, they fall off the wagon. Um, but if you can make it to, if you make a resolution and you stick with it and you make it to January 21st you got a good chance of carrying it, keeping it with you. Yeah. My, my oldest daughter Kim, for Christmas she wanted this, she asked for this dot journal. What in the world is a dot journal? And she also asked for these little, for these templates, things and some other, you know, some pencils and Tell me, what is a dot journal? And she said, well, some people, when they keep a journal, they they uh, they treat it as like a an expression. So a dot journal is you have these templates and you can draw dots in, in different patterns to mean things. And also you, make, you can draw stuff there. So it's not just words, it's drawings and these dots and these certain patterns and things like that. I don't know if Sometimes when I, I'm out on the green belts, green belt trails in, in Kingwood, I'll come across these dots that are in patterns that are on the that are on the trail. And I don't know what they mean, but I know what they're for. Is there are there's a couple running clubs in Kingwood and those dots tell them something about either where the course where they turn right or left or how far it is or how far they come. These dots will be in different patterns mm. on the trail. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. My thoughts on these are not to a braille system. But mm-hmm. it's kind of like the markings on the freeway. You have arrows which way to go. And yeah. Mm-hmm. An arrow is obvious to us, but a, a dot, if you know the, if you know what it stands for, then mm-hmm. it's the same thing. Now, I'm always perplexed when I pull up to the ATM. Braille. There's also a place for somebody to plug in the TTY. You know, I'm 
always wondered how they got the person. Right. How did, mm -hmm. how, and how can they see where to plug in the mm -hmm. manual? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, no, they can see it. But right. Never mind. <laughs> Okay. Give her a cookie. She'll, she'll come on. <laughs> uh, I must need one. Uh. Well, let's let's move over to page 52. I keep kicking. There's something down here. The little, there's a big container. I guess that's the decorations. Or something. Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, we've got several. One, two, three. Several. Several three. containers. containers. Four. Okay. We're contained. We are. Yeah. All right, over on page 52, it starts off here, nature or form. In King James, the New American Standard, Revised Standard, it says, as Greek philosophical, a, as a Greek philosophical term, the word morph means the inward character of a thing as well as the outward expression of that character. It has nothing to do with shape. Light expresses the form of fire a good deed expresses the form of goodness. So Paul may be saying that Christ both possessed and expressed the essence of deity before his incarnation. In Jewish literature, popular in Paul's day, morph means condition status. In this sense, Christ possessed the status and privileges of deity, worthiness of highest honor or lordship, before his incarnation. Now, you've probably heard the phrase, you know, somebody morphed or something more than mm -hmm. something else. That's what we see, where we see a change mm -hmm. um, of things. Um, my oldest daughter and son and I, son-in-law, every Friday, each Friday night we started the first Friday night in January this year. We're watching a Star Wars movie. So the first, a week ago we watched the first one. We're watching them in order, not the way they were produced, but the order that they're supposed to be. So we watch them, and now last night, or Friday night, we watched uh, Clones, The War of the Clones, or whatever, number two. So after we watch them, then we get on a phone call and we talk about it. And uh, just to understand just what we thought about the movie, what we talked about it, and go back and forth. So we've come to the conclusion of Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> if you're familiar, have you watched Star Wars? Okay, yeah. Star Wars, Jar Jar Binks is in one or two. And uh, uh, the critics had a field day with him. He's kind of a ridiculous character. Uh, he's got these big floppy ears and he's got these little eyes that are up on stalks. And uh, he walks funny. And he looks like he's about 10 feet tall. And, he's, and he speaks. I couldn't understand him, but my, old, my daughter said, well, turn on closed captioning. I didn't. So last night, or Friday night when I watched it, he's in number two as well. I turned on closed captioning, and I could understand what he was saying. Anyway, so uh, the reason I say that is morphing. Uh, in these movies like Star Wars, somebody had to decide what all these people beings were going to look like and how they moved and what they saw and things like that. So they morphed, morphed people into that. I don't know if that makes any sense. Or not. But anyway. Well, on page 52, left-hand margin, there's a, a thing here that says, to thought and discussion. Why do you think people today are so conscious of their rights? Okay? That's a fitting question with this week's events and previous so conscious of their rights. I think it's selfish. I, I think, think so too. Part of it has to do they feel like they don't have it. Or they're being taken away. Mm -hmm. Or they're being constricted. Mm -hmm. Some some maybe one of those or some combination of those. Mm -hmm. People feel that they're they're uh, they don't have any rights or they're being constricted or being uh, discriminate discriminated against because of their rights. We have this uh, critical critical social justice uh, thing going on. So, 
part of that. Then, have, are you familiar with the 1619 project? Okay. Well, there was this. There was this New York Times reporter that uh, decided that she was going to be on this 16. She she felt come to the conclusion that in 1619 slavery was introduced into the United States, and she proceeded to write a a number of articles, even published some books. Unfortunately, though, she she didn't pay much attention to history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> history, if it didn't fit her book, right. she just ignored it. Left it out. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, uh, do that. Well, after her book and her columns and the paper started appearing, uh, some historians at universities started pointing out some of her missing of the facts. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden some of the some of the things that were published on the New York Times website were altered and adjusted. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but if you ever hear of the sixteen nineteen project, that that the reason that for that number that's the year that people arrived in Virginia to establish a colony. Mm -hmm. Now one of the problems that she had, that she misstated, she said that there were the people, there were some uh, people of color, let's say, from her assertion was that they came as slaves. But it turned out, the real history is, they were some of the masters. Yeah. And some of the people that were, were servants, or she called slaves, were actually, they were uh, indentured Servants that they they got their their uh, uh, cruise ship costs yes. paid yeah. in exchange for a certain amount of years of or time of labor. Mm -hmm. So that that didn't fit the slavery. Type thing. But anyway, so those are a couple things that she got she got messed up on. But uh, the New York Times was really crunching us, pushing us, pushing us mm -hmm. until uh, the real several professors and other people too started pointing out well you know if you read the history books it's not quite the same way there's a whole lot of stuff there. but anyway so uh, the reason I point that out is that this lady the journalist that was writing this she, she saw this as some uh, uh, rights this was a rights issue these people didn't have any rights well in actuality they did have Anywhere near the way she for, for, for mm -hmm. Well, is this good or bad for people to be so conscious of their rights? Is it good or bad? It's what you make it. You can make it. If it's true, then it's okay. But if you're lying, then it's. Um, it can be either way. Yes, it is. Kind of like a spoon. Mm -hmm. you know, a spoon by itself is neither good nor bad. It's what you make. But if you use it to, to hit somebody over the head with, it's not so good. But if you use it to to uh, dish up soup or something, or cream cheese icing, it can be very good. But if you if you uh, put the light of the Bible on it, and it says that we're to consider our to consider others better than ourselves, then uh, and that we are to be as Servant, mm -hmm. then actually, people thinking that they have a, some right is a false assumption. Yeah. yeah that's true. Well, it's, it goes against the teaching of the Bible. Mm -hmm. It goes against scripture. Some respects, yes. As if we try to assert our rights, then that would potentially push mm -hmm. us. We're saying we're better than somebody. Right. Better than and somebody. And uh, that's not, uh, that is in conflict with what Paul's teaching us and what right. Christ says, where we should be servants right. and, and not. Uh, the world is pushing everybody to make the assumption that they are entitled. Right. True. Where that, that is true. not what the word says. That's yeah. right. That not, not, 
not entitled to the way the world is trying to make everybody mm -hmm. believe that they're entitled. That is not what the word says. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And when you follow it long enough, the history of it, you'll find there's usually one, one or two people or a small group of people that has that in the agenda. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, agenda, correct. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to stop there because it's 1058. My little alarm buzzer here is going to start beep, beep, beep <laughs> in one minute. So we'll pick up here. We'll, we have this optional application. So this okay, week, work on that optional application. And then we're going to start off on uh, question two, moving on. And there are my little buzzer buzzing now. So, uh, so we'll pick up there uh, on that. And if you complete your... Lesson in a head. You really might get a gold star. <laughs> I'm going to bring you some icing. Icing, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. you can bring your icing and cookies every night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if you complete it, yeah. that determines how many vanilla wafers and, and I, how many I dips think. you get of yeah. icing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Have you had those uh, vanilla wafers, uh, lemon flavored? No. That's not good. Oh, yeah. 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 I, guess, I, guess I, I picked didn't. the box up on the steak one day. Yeah. Learned that they oh. taste good, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. huh. No, I didn't even know they made them. How can they be vanilla if they're lemon? Well, they're lemon. No, they're, they're lemon. Lemon wafers. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Lemon, they're vanilla wafers and, and a cup of milk are, are pretty good stuff. Yeah. Catch me in. Yep. <laughs> That's true. Well, let's close with the word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this time as we've uh, discussed, talked about Paul's words to the Philippians. Help us to learn from that and apply it to our lives today as we practice humility and servanthood and as we see a need to change our minds and our attitudes to, to imitate Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, let me turn off the camera here. Hold your voice, Lord. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Adios. Adios.